again, this is Robert with Go Engineer Technical Support Department, and we're doing another Quick Tips video. This is part three of a three-part series on mold tools. Uh, we've already done draft analysis and created split lines and party lines for our part, and so now we are going to create shutoff surfaces, parting surfaces, and actually split to make our mold itself. Uh, we need to have these uh, this parting line created before we can move on. And we've got it, so we're all set. Essentially, with all of these tools, you're going to move from left to right. We've already we've gotten up to parting lines, so now we're going to go to shut off surfaces. Shut off surfaces are not always required. Uh, they're only needed if you have holes in the middle of your part, like we do in our over large shirt button here. Uh, and so we're going to want to close those off, let SolidWorks know where the holes are, so we can know what to do with them. Uh, we're just going to launch right in, choose shut off surfaces. And if we're very lucky, it will just automatically detect and choose them. If they're nice round holes like this, uh, you're pretty safe. Sometimes it can be pretty hard. If you can't quite get it to work, you may have to create these surfaces yourself. Uh, right now, it's just choosing the loops and making a flat face for all of them. If it's missed one, uh, all you have to do is, is just select the loops, and then it will uh, fill in the surfaces. Uh, if for some reason you wanted a different shape other than just a flat cut off, uh, shut off surface, then then you would create the surfaces yourself. In this case, it shows the bottom because if you look at the the normal view here, oh, it doesn't want me to do that. If you look at the normal two view, you can see that this face is drafted in, and so it's picked the bottom of them. Uh, I like them the way they are, so I'm just going to click the green check mark, and you can see it's created a surface that fills that. Um, that hole there down at the bottom. That's a surface body, uh, and so it's not actually uh, filling in the hole for the part itself. So we're going back to isometric view. We've created our shutoff surfaces. That's all we need to do there. We're going to choose parting surfaces now, and it automatically picks up our parting line, and it starts to create our uh, surface. Now you can see that it's it's just uh, cutting in. You can see this yellow preview. Uh, that's pretty frequent for it to be cutting in the wrong direction, so I'm going to flip the direction. It's coming out. You want to make this very large. I made it three inches. The reason why is because this needs to be bigger than the actual mold body that you're going to be creating. So I've extended it out to three inches to make it very large, just going straight out. Now if your parting surface is not flat and uh, circular like mine, the surface might be uh, a bit of a funny shape, and so you can adjust some of these settings, perpendicular to pull or normal to surface. Perpendicular to pull keeps your face perpendicular to the direction of pull, or in other words, parallel to this face that we selected. Normal to surface, instead will keep it normal to the, the face that it's coming out of, which in this case there's no difference between the two. Although this wants to reverse. There we go. So you can see there's really no difference between the two in our situation here. But uh, you'll just want to pick whichever one uh, looks best, suits your needs best. Again, there's also some more tools. Smoothing it doesn't make a difference for our part, but if you have some sharp corners in your surface, you can choose smooth to sort of transition them. This picture is pretty good. Or you can just let them be sharp. Three inches is pretty good. We're going to click OK. And now we have parting surfaces. This is uh, everything we need to start doing our tooling split. To do your tooling split, it wants us to draw a sketch. This is basically going to do a boss extrude uh, over our part. We want to encapsulate our button inside this extrude. So it wants us to pick a face to sketch on. Because our parting surface is flat, there's no harm in sketching on the parting surface itself. Otherwise, you'd want to choose a face to do it on. I'm going to um, make a rectangle. You can do a rectangle or square, whatever shape you want. It's, you want to keep it inside the bounds of your parting surface. And I'm just going to exit the sketch, and it'll launch us straight into the tooling split. And you can see a preview. It's created a cube based on these parameters here. You can adjust them separately. There we go. When I click OK, it makes a body. 
Now, this is when this display pane is going to be very useful. Uh, normally, this is closed. Click on here to show the display pane. We're going to expand our bodies folders. We have surface bodies and we have solid bodies. The surface bodies we can now hide by clicking on their yellow boxes because we don't really need them anymore. And if we make this first body is the button itself, and these two are the tooling splits. We make them transparent. We can see our button on the inside. And if we wanted to, we could actually hide the part on the inside and maybe hide. I'm just going to click around here. I hid the other two bodies. Get rid of that transparency. And I'm only looking at this part. And you can see we've got the top half of our button and these uh, pieces from the top half come down to where shut off surfaces were. If we show the other one and hide this first one, we can see that that's in the bottom. And that's just it. At this point, you can say uh, right click on the solid bodies folder and you can say save bodies and actually save those bodies out as separate part files. If you wanted to do these in a batch, you could uh, create a new part and insert multiple instances and then knit the uh, bodies together. And then you could make a mold that conceivably has many buttons on it. And at that point, you would go to start cutting your sprues and your runners and anything else you need to um, get your mold made. Uh, this has been Robert with Go Engineer Technical Support Department on Mold Tools. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.